Hey, everybody. I know you've all been waiting for this live stream. I'm going to give everybody a, a little bit of a chance to trickle in here. So uh, while you're all trickling in, as you're all trickling in, I want you to go and click share. If you guys are coming to us from Facebook, I'm just waiting to see when this is going to pop up here on our Next Gen Profit page. Oh, I see we're live. Good. I'm going to take a moment here to go and share this live video with you guys. Ah, there we are. I see all our faces there. Rebecca, maybe you can see if you can pin me. Hey, oh, I hear myself there. Okay. So if all of you are on Facebook, if you're coming in to watch, oh, hi, Rebecca, you show is pinned now. Oh, thank you for all this technical fun that we're having here today. All righty, guys, for those of you who are coming into Facebook, before I even get started, because I have got such a download for you, I have got a word from the Lord for you today. As we meditated and have been praying on what your prophetic type is, um, I thought I knew what I was going to teach, but as all things with the Holy Spirit, as you start to meditate on the subject, as you begin to sit for a while and stop assuming that you already know everything that you think you know, because that's a prophetic weakness. You know, we get our one little prophetic word, we get our one little thing, we're like, that's the word from God. But as I meditated on it, God started to reveal to me this time and season, now he's calling his Ezekiel's to take their place in the church. Now, here's a bit of a problem for you guys. You don't know you're an Ezekiel. Now, why is it so important for you to know your prophetic type? Why is it so important for you to know in the first place what it is that God has shaped in you? Well, I'm going to answer that for you. But before I do, I'd like to know where everybody is from. We have got like so many different platforms. We are streaming today. We've got Zoom. We've got Facebook. We've got YouTube. We've got tons and tons of places. So I want to see and connect with my audience before I give you the download that God's given me for you today. If you could just in the chat box very, very quickly, just tell me where you're from. I'd love to welcome you. And I want us to feel just a sense of community. Ah, from New York. Ah, we've got Joanne from New York, Minnesota, uh, North Carolina, Detroit, Arizona, Maryland, Virginia. Oh, I love the seafood in Virginia. Guys, that was the very first time I had, oh man, that's that Cajun, you know, where they put it in the bag and there's all that sauce and there's all that shrimp and there's all that crab and there's all that goodness. That is what Virginia means to me amazing food. Um, we see St. Martin. Oh, another beautiful, beautiful place with amazing people. South Africa, Melbourne, Australia. Wow. What time are you up? There's an early riser. Uh, we've got another one from South Africa, Northern Ireland. Now I've never been to Ireland. That's a place yet that is still on my bucket list. I've got to come and visit. We've got Johannesburg, Pamela from Massachusetts. Welcome, Pamela. Um, now, Daisy May, good to see you around. Daisy's on our community of apostles and prophets. I recognize your name, girl. She's in Minnesota, San Antonio, Texas. That's Gloria from San Antonio. Wow, we've got everybody from all over the place. Graham, Texas, Courtney Moss, Brazil. Oh, my goodness. Welcome all the way from Brazil. Well, we're pretty close. I don't think too close, but I'm actually streaming today from Rosarito, Mexico. So let's just say I'm an authority on what really good food tastes like because I'm in one of the best foodie places in the entire world, in my opinion. We've got Isabel from Lake Washington. Okay, that's good to meet you, Isabel. I love what God is doing here. Do you see this, you guys? What we have here is a connection, a, col a, a collaboration, a fellowship of prophets from all over the world. And every single one of us have this question. Who am I? How ridiculous. 
You know you're called. You know God has given you something for the church. And yet still, it, it seems to me that no matter how much anointing we have, no matter how much we can hear God for ourselves, still we have identity issues. Well, today I'm going to answer that question for you. Today I'm not only going to help you recognize your prophetic identity, but for those of you that identify with Ezekiel today, guys, you want to follow this all the way through because God gave me a download, a powerful, powerful prophetic word for you that I'm going to share in this session, in this quest. Um, for those of you who are very familiar with our ministry, this is our second quest. And I know you guys love the last one so much that you asked us to do another. And I've asked the team to make this a permanent fixture in our ministry. So every other month, you can expect such a quest. Why? Why? Well, because we're Toach Ministries, we're Craig and Collect Toach of the Next Gen Prophets, and we're here to accelerate your prophetic process because the Lord knows we need some acceleration. Who likes to be stuck in the same spot? Who likes to be on a plateau? Not me. So I tend to gather and attract around me those who are fiery like I am. That's why I don't doubt that today we have a lot of Ezekiels on here because the Ezekiel, if I was to, to think of one symbol that, epitomizes Ezekiel. It's fire. Absolute fire. Oh, I see somebody popped in from Pennsylvania. Hi, Teresa. Guys, please keep it. You're more than welcome to post in the chat. I'll keep my eye on it as best as I can. I want to know who you are, I'll, especially for those of you on YouTube and on Facebook. I can't see your names. For those in Zoom, I have a beautiful view here of everybody that's joining us uh, us on the Zoom meeting, but for everybody else, please throw in your name, say hello, give us a greeting. Yeah, I see a, a nice little fire emoticon. Throw down your emoticons. In fact, I've got this great idea. I tell you what, every single person watching this, I want you to throw down in the chat an emoticon that fully depicts the kind of prophet you think you are. Let me see how many fire starters we get. Do we have swords? Do we have harps? Oh my goodness. We've got, I've got a cross. I've got a heart. I've got a fire. I've got a, I've got a laughing emoji. Of course, that's Dalton. He's throwing out the laughing emoji. That would make about say, oh, that's a good one, Nicholas. I've got a crown. I've got swords. I've got fire. What is your emoji? If somebody had to call you out by an emoji, what would... Yeah, B. Now, here, you see, we've got Michael Feltes in here. And as we continue on this first incredible leg of our quest together, I'm going to share two things with you. We're going to show you what the Ezekiel prophet looks like. I'm going to give you a full identity breakdown. I'm going to bring on the co principal of our prophetic school, Michael Feltes, to release some of that fire. And then in the next part, I have a word for you, Ezekiel's guys, please. If you identify as I begin to teach, stick it through to the end of the message. God has given me a powerful download for you, and I don't want you to miss it out. I, I really, my heart burned. It just burned this morning as I sought him for you. I just felt the heart of the Father for you, and he's got a very important direction because it's time that you embrace who you are. It's time that you take hold of your identity because Satan has attacked it. He's destroyed it. He's tried to say, no, that's not who you are. Well, we are going to make it real today. So can I see some more emojis? I've got more hearts. I've got a dynamite emoji. Who was that? Oh, facial. Of course he did the dynamite. He's our first dynamite emoji. Come on. Now, if I let um, Michael Feltazen loose on this chat, there is not enough room in the chat box for the emojis because if anybody knows him, he doesn't use words when he speaks. He's a sound effect kind of guy. Even in real life, we, we legit call him Mr. Emoticon because <laughs> I ask him a question and there's so much going on. I'm like, yes, but I don't understand your words. What did you just say to me? I felt a lot and, and it was engaging and I was interested and now I don't understand what you said, but don't, don't, don't think I'm ragging, Michael, actually. What I just did there is give you the first point, the first sign of what an Ezekiel prophet is it a strength or is it a weakness? I'm undecided because they have such a unique mandate to the body of Christ that they're called to minister to the church in a very particular way. Now, if you don't know that you're an Ezekiel and you have this very particular trait that I'm going to share with you in a moment, you can get a bit discouraged. 
you're like, I upset everybody. Nobody ever understands what I'm trying to say. And so you begin to doubt yourself. Well, I'm going to remove that self-doubt from you today because the Ezekiel prophet has very clear signs and God wants to give you an identity today. Oh my goodness, I see. This is a beautiful emoji. Look at this. I have a hammer, a toolbox, and swords. I love this. Is this a teacher? Is there a teacher moonlight? Wait a minute. Is there a teacher moonlighting on our prophetic quest here? Because it feels a little teachery. I'm not going to lie. That's all right. That's all right. Even if you're a teacher, come on. Maybe, you know, I, I know that you're going to draw from this. You can, you can take all the principles. Oh, pastors too. Oh, then we have someone that has clocks. And okay, I'm totally loving these emojis for this reason. I never knew that there was such an emoji. Okay, I, I feel like I'm being next gen schooled here on the language of emojis. Absolutely. <laughs> Lock and key emoji. Oh, okay. You know, I, I almost want to stop and go deeper on that. Mary Kay, she's, she's given a lock and key emoji. The prophet in me just sees and feels so much in this emoji. But I see a lot of fire. So I feel, I feel, like, I feel like people are ready. You see, now I can see Michael Feltesen's face because he's on Zoom. I haven't brought him on yet. I can see his face. And, and, and it's going all over the place. He's like, can we get started? All right, all right, all right, all right. I think we said hello, but please do keep posting the emojis. I am highly entertained. I love it. Absolutely love it, you guys. What is it that makes Ezekiel such an, a unique prophet? Now, if you're already on myprophetictribe.com, that is our quest page. Guys, bookmark this page. And while I'm at it, let's just stop right there. I have got a question to ask and only the Holy Spirit will know if you answered. Did you share? Did you share? Did you share this live stream to your Facebook page? Now, I'm not there to check you out. And I'm not saying that I'm setting the Holy Spirit on you. I'm just saying that he is everywhere. And he can see if you shared this live stream to your Facebook page. So please do. Let's, let's spread the love around. You know, there's so many prophets out there that have just put up the hat. They're like, I'm done with this. I can't go through the process. If I had to say Craig and I bump into them every single day, I would be underestimating how many times the Lord leads us to prophets everywhere we go. I don't care if we're traveling, if we're sitting in an airplane, if we're booking into a hotel, if we go to the spa. I'm not kidding you. There's a prophet there. And if there is a prophet there, the Lord's going to lead that prophet to us. And almost always, the word I have to say is just keep on keeping on. Because the kind of rejection you face, the kind of onslaught you face, you just want to give up. And that's why this message today for you, Ezekiel's, is going to be life changing. I want you to hear the word God has for you, okay? Because the Ezekiel, if you've read on our page, myprophetictribe.com, you'll see that they are the evangelistic type prophet. Now, the minute I say that, maybe you think, ah, I know what that is. It's someone that uses their prophetic anointing to lead people to the Lord. Yes and no. I would say first and foremost, Ezekiel's are fire bringers, but there's something very particular about them, why they fire bringers and what sets them apart. And there's a character trait in you, Ezekiel's out there, and you're neglecting it. You're hiding it because it's not always very accepted by other people. But what you don't recognize is it's that thing, that thing that is the fire, that brings the fire. And you keep swallowing it, hiding it, tucking it away because you've offended people. You've upset at people. You are a dramatic type. You, dra you just bring drama. You bring drama. You are drama. You are an emoticon. Like legit, look at these. Winston, look at all these emoticons. Oh my goodness. Emojis, emojis everywhere. I love it. And so you end up bringing so much fire but the last thing you ever wanted to do was bring hurt. And you're like, how do I find this balance? Well, you're gonna find that today. So here's some interesting things that you might not know about Ezekiel the prophet. Now I'm only gonna give you the, 
the highlights, the best parts, because I'm going to reserve this full teaching for our prophetic mentorship program. I'll tell you about that later. But for now, few fire bringers. Oh my goodness, I see more fire. There are so many fire bringers in the room. I literally feel the burning, the fire, the smoke in my lounge today. Even my pregnant beagle back there, please ignore her if you see her waddling around. She feels the fire, I'm sure, too, because she's just passed right out on the couch. So I know that you've got a lot to bring the body of Christ. But, you know, Ezekiel was a priest. But he wasn't just any kind of priest. He came from a family line of priests. In fact, his father was a Zodokite priest. Now, um, Zadok, he was, get this, the very first priest to serve in the temple that was built by King Solomon. Think about the honor. He rubbed shoulders, Zadok, with David and Solomon. And so this is, this is Ezekiel's lineage. I mean, he has seen some things. He isn't just some little wilderness prophet out there who didn't know better. No, he comes from a long line of those that serve the Lord. And he knows what the law is. He knows how people are meant to be living. He knows sin from righteousness. And now he's living in an era where he's seeing idols that were in the temple and those idols being removed by King Josiah and then idols being put back. And he sees this travail that his people are going through. And then comes his 30th year. Very significant year for Ezekiel. It was significant because that's the year he received his commission. And as a priest, that's also the year that he would have been positioned. And so that's the first thing we, we can recognize by the Ezekiel is that your commission comes right away. You don't wait for your commission. From the time God appoints you, from the time God calls you, from the time man qualifies you, that commission comes. And so Ezekiel begins experiencing his very first vision. And guess what? His very first vision was everything to do with fire, fire, fire. Now, fire keeps you warm. Fire lights up the night, but fire also burns. And God needed someone to burn because his people were on the brink of destruction. And he said, Ezekiel, I need you to bring a message to my people. Satan is out to get them. Satan is going to destroy them. The enemy is coming. They need to get right with me. They need to get in order. And so we have ourselves here, a very dramatic prophet. Ezekiel was a drama queen. He was a drama king. He was an emoticon. There were emojis all over him. He was like a walking emoji. And I'm seeing all these emojis popping up here. Oh my goodness. That was Ezekiel. He was up and he was down and he was here and he was there. I, I can imagine this guy was a raging express. So we're going to bring um, the principal from our school, Michael Feltes, and on in a bit. So you get a bit of idea uh, between him and I, between our two fires. Oh my goodness. This whole screen is going to blow up. You want to see if you can relate with Michael. I've got some very pointed questions for him. And I chose them because I wanted you to relate it. So as I ask Mike these questions, for all these Ezekiels out there, I want you to imagine I'm asking you the question so we can engage each other, okay? Because I want you to embrace your call. I want you to hear this word that God has for you today. Come on, Ezekiel. I know it's not easy. You know what struck my heart more and more about Ezekiel is that in his entire process, he was so sold out for the, the righteousness of the father and the law. And, and as dramatic as all his visions were, and as dramatic as was his expression, he truly had a heart to snatch his people from the fire that was to come, the ungodly fire, the enemy's fire to destroy them. And so he warned them and he shouted and he did prophetic acts and he used all of that emotion and all of that drama. And yet still, the people disobeyed God. And Jerusalem is taken under siege. He prophesies, he prophesies and still Jerusalem is taken under siege. And during the time when he's, his nation, his people 
everything he stands for, everything he believes in, everything he's hoping to say comes under attack of the enemy, his wife dies. She dies during the siege on Jerusalem. Here he is warning God's people about the destruction to come. They don't heed the warning. And so the destruction comes. And because of their sin, because of their disobedience, he loses his wife. God says to him, you're not going to mourn her. You're going to be silent as a prophetic act. And right there is an outstanding sign of one who's called to be an Ezekiel. God does not use the power of your tongue. He uses your prophetic acts. He uses your prophetic foolishness. Every time God calls on you, you've got to do. Not say, because every time you open your mouth, prophet, you say it wrong. <laughs> Remember, I was saying to you about Mike, I was like, you have a conversation with Mike, you feel it. You feel a conversation with Mike. You don't understand all the time the conversation with Mike, but you feel it. And you walk away going, whoo, I felt the fire of God. What? What did he say again? I don't know, but I felt Jesus. Are you in Ezekiel? Let me see some fire. If, if you feel, if you're already feeling the Ezekiel mantle on you, if you feel this is you, I want you slapping those fire emojis there in the chat. Let me see. Where's our Ezekiel's at? And it's like, well, great, great. You called me to be a prophet and then you can't, I can't use my mouth. Fantastic. I'm a lousy communicator. Lousy. But when God does need to use you, he positions you. He puts you exactly where you need to give that word, how you need to give that word. And by some miracle, you get that message across. You see, the Ezekiel needs to operate more in fire and more in power because he's going to find those that are unbelievers. And he's going to find those in the body of Christ who've lost their fire. They've lost their passion. They don't need more words. They need fire. They need more fire. And so the Ezekiel is the fire bringing uh, prophet. But just because he's a fire bringing prophet doesn't mean he isn't going through. But you know what the worst part is? Not, and I'd say the worst part. But the best part, all at the same time, is that even though the Ezekiel goes through trial and tribulation, that fire always remains. Whether Ezekiel was prophesying because of the destruction of his people or prophesying them hope after the destruction of his people, he always had a word. He always had a commission. And God always sent him to do the hard job, Ezekiel. Oh, there's somebody here who is fighting the hand of God because he's given you the hard job and God says but I've called you to be an Ezekiel I've called you to be a fire bringer I've called you to set my people free I've called you to the hard job do the hard thing prophet do the hard thing prophet God has a word for you that I'm going to give you at the end of this but before I rent too much I should get through some more of my points and bring Mike on here so that he can share some of that fire with you as well you're going to be positioned in worldly situations to share the heart of Christ. And I think for most Ezekiels, you're going to be like, bring it, Lord, bring it. I'm ready to go into the workplace. I'm ready to go into the streets. I don't mind evangelizing the waitress that I'm having coffee with. Position me by the waitress, Jesus. I'm going to lead her to you today and you're ready. But let me challenge you, Ezekiel, with this little positioning that you are fighting God on and you need to embrace it. Why? Because this is your identity. When you embrace your identity and you know who you are, the fire increases, okay? God is going to position you in lukewarm churches. God is going to position you in a community of a lukewarm people that are going to frustrate you. They're going to make you feel very dramatic. Because what's the matter with you people? What's the matter with you? Can you just get a clue? Can you be motivated? Can you engage? Can you care? Do you even care? Ooh-wee. Let, let's, let's do some filtering. We're going to do some filtering. 
It's that, you know, we, we need to sort out some of that before frustration becomes bitterness, but that's what our prophetic school's for. And certainly that's what our prophetic mentorship program is for that Craig and I are, ho are hosting from the month of August. I'll tell you more about that later. We'll, we'll sort that out. But for now, I'd like you to embrace that side of yourself. That frustration you feel of, I am so sick of being stuck in a lukewarm church, I could scream. That is a sign that you are and Ezekiel, how many Ezekiels do I have here? How many Ezekiels do I have? Let me see you. If you feel that you're an Ezekiel, I want you to write Ezekiel there in that chat. Let's see who you are. Because God has a very specific commission for you. And he's got a word for you today. He has got a very clear word for you that is going to shake, rattle, and roll your world, not just help you embrace who you are, but have the confidence to step out and do the job he's called you to. The church needs you. Prophet Ezekiel, the church needs you. That lukewarm church needs you. You are there because they're lukewarm. Because you're meant to bring the fire. You're meant to bring the fire. Amen. So before I get too fired up here, I'm going to have the principal of our prophetic school come on here. I know a lot of you are already familiar with him. You already know him. There you go, Mike. Ooh, you hey, you're here. You you get to give one takeaway before I give you the firing line questions. Oh, absolutely. Biggest takeaway so far, guys, you are positioned to be that Ezekiel. Whether that is in that lukewarm church, whether it is in a system of the world, God positioned you to be that fire bringer. Don't negate your position, prophet. You need to stand your ground now and to actually embrace it like Apostle Colette stated in the beginning. Embrace this prophetic type. Embrace who you are, prophet. Absolutely. You know what's frustrating about being Ezekiel and also liberating about being an Ezekiel because we're prophets. We just, you know, we swing, swing from pillar to post is that God is going to use you less with your words than he is with your action. And when you don't get that your action is the power and you're in a entire community of prophets as Michael is here, or you're in a, a team where everybody are great communicators. I know that for an Ezekiel, it's very frustrating because it's not like you're trying to mess it up. It's not like you're trying to upset everybody with the wrong words, but you do. So as, you know, as I'm asking this question for all the Ezekiels out there, I want you to, to ponder on this. It's like, I want to hear from you, Mike. Let's get real with, with the prophets on this chat. What are your frustrations? How does it feel when you, you're trying so hard to communicate? You do that, you know, even with me as your apostle, with your, your yep. peers, your teammates, and you're trying so hard to bring those words and they just look at you like, what's the matter with you? How, explain and express some of your, your conflict and frustration with that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it's very frustrating. I'm going to get real with you, Apostle. I'm going to get real with you with joining. I get frustrated because I know what I want to say. I know that the Lord has a message for the, his people. And it's hard for me to correlate the two because I do like to bring the fire. I want the anointing because in the spirit, for example, um, I see a sword. And I know that God has someone over here that needs to cut ties. Then you so stuck in your ways you're not cutting the ties especially the spiritual links and all i'm seeing is a sword and god is nudging me from behind and he's like cut the tie michael cut the tie and it's so frustrating to communicate that because i'm not saying hey how are you how's your life been tell me this no i'm like i bind you in the name of jesus i cut that tie in the spirit it's it's it seems so aggressive but you must understand the way that I feel God is actually literally fire. I feel him touch me from my shoulders and push me to this person where I can say, um, Eloise, God is saying that you are not positioned in the right land. You are going to be uprooted and positioned in a new place. Mm. And all I'm seeing is that picture. And I struggle sometimes to correlate the two where I'm not as nice as the other prophets and the pastors, where I'll be like, hey, Eloise, you know, it's 
It would be nice if you could just leave this land that's you getting very dry. You know, one of those nice kumbaya prophets. No! Jesus just loves you. We're going to get to that no! type. If you're the Jesus loves you, come here, let me show you the love of Jesus. We'll, we're getting there. I'm not even going to tell you which type that is so that you come to all of the types in the quest. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. No. That poor, that poor fire. I've seen you do it so many times. And um, yes. you even in a team of prophets. You're in a team of prophets and they look at you like, where did that come from? What's the matter with you? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It, it happens. Okay, this is going to sound a little strange, but not a lot of people know this. It is literally not in a set time period. God just, boom, this person needs a prophetic word. Boom. Tell this person to stop sinning because sin is sin. And I don't accept it. It's black or white. And especially in a group of prophets who are all different prophetic types, I am very, very emotive in my speech. And yes. <laughs> yes, you are. And sometimes those sound effects, did you hear him pray? That is how oh. Mike delivers his fire. But I've also seen how God uses you through action to bring real change. Why don't you talk a little bit about that? Because we look at prophetic acts. I know there's a lot of people that look at prophetic acts as I did a prophetic dance or I acted mm -hmm. out something in the spirit. But when I look at Ezekiel's acts and certainly the act he had to perform in being silent about the death of his wife, these were very specific and mm -hmm. they brought change. <laughs> And you're, you're a marketplace prophet, so you are more than welcome to share from that perspective as well. Very good. I'm correlating my answer because there's many avenues to attack this answer from. But especially in the marketplace, you know, there's a lot of actions working with systems, working with your apostle the way that I do. We're very hands-on testing, testing, testing. But taking on a more naturalistic side, especially like how you mentioned Apostle Ezekiel more and his wife. And he still continued his prophetic ministry. He still continued his ministry. Mm -hmm. You had to stay silent. He didn't have an opportunity to mourn. He wasn't allowed to. And, um, you know, just taking it from where I was positioned at that time, I didn't lose my wife. But um, I did lose my daughter. But God didn't allow me to mourn in that season because the work needed to continue. Amen. I needed to care for my students. I run a prophetic school with my wife under the cover of the apostles. And in, during this season of 2020, so much happened with the students. Students lost um, partners. Students that we actually know that were very dear to Deborah and I died and passed away. And I, the, God didn't allow me to mourn my daughter's death till years later, actually. And I'm going to be real with you guys. I had to embrace it very quickly. Because I was positioned in the medical system, because of twins, um, they were in the NICU, I was positioned in the medical system. Now, I don't have time to mourn and take a whole sabbatical while my son is fighting for his life, while the doctors are trying everything that they can to save them, while my students are going through and they need ministry 24-7 because we're an international-based ministry. God gave power to me as an Ezekiel because I was positioned in the right place mm. where I can show actions and I can show it instead of saying it. I, guys, we used to walk up and down that hospital floor doing nothing but praying in tongues for 120 days, literally almost 20 hours a day. We had about four hours of sleep from two to four. They gave us literally from two to four, maybe two to five. That was it. And our actions spoke louder than our words could. Mm -hmm. When doctors came and they lost kids and babies, they came to us so that we could refill them with the joy of the Lord. Mm. Now, I'm going to get on a rant over here if I keep oh, going. Yeah, I, who else feeling that fire? Who else is feeling the Ezekiel? In the like, this is getting real, guys. This is ministry. This is the work of an Ezekiel. Yes, and you, yes. Ezekiel, you keep being positioned in these hard places. And you're like, why has my father abandoned me? Your father has not abandoned you. Your father has positioned you because in yeah. your weakness, he is strong. Amen. No, guys, let me put it like this, Ezekiel's. God is bigger than you. You are putting yourself on a pedestal. You are thinking yourself as higher than everybody. But because 
if you stop for five seconds and you just say, no, I'm going to embrace my prophetic type. I'm going to embrace where I'm positioned. You think I liked being positioned in a NICU with babies, having my daughter die? You think I liked when my students were dying left, right, and sitting? You think I liked when doctors came to me? You know, my flesh was burning. It was crucifying. But in amongst it all, the joy of the Lord was my strength. The power and the anointing of God the Father came down in that hospital. And more babies were saved. More students were set free than ever before. Guys, once you are positioned, know this one thing. God will shape you. God will take you. And he needs you as he kills. I love that allegory that Apostle Collette shared of the lukewarm church. I cannot stand lukewarm churches. I do not like them. But prophet, you God positioned you there. Just as I was positioned in the medical system and I had to face through my own trials and errors and stay silent and do actions rather than speech. So are you in the church today. Mm, mm, mm. You know, if you read through the whole of Ezekiel, his entire purpose and he's and even the visions he shared was of israel being the bride of the father and that burns in you that burns in you it burns in you so much it, it frustrates you it does make you angry you do want to just bring that fire but i hope that you could identify so much not just what mike expressed but how he expressed it it's very unfiltered it's very confrontational it's very easy to take offense to if, if you're the one that he's talking to and he said you are not doing good enough you are living in sin yeah. you need you like oh wow it's not easy being an ezekiel because you get so much backlash and you get so much affront which is why you do need a tribe you do need those around you to teach you how to deliver that but also to to accept that that's who you are not all of us can be all yes. nice and share the word yes there are those prophetic types and we need somebody to come along the way to bring the the oil <laughs> of healing or we need the trainer like uh his amazing wife deborah ann yeah. who's the trainer the deborah prophetess who goes to war and, and, and helps set people free. Incredible. But for those fire bringers, are you ready to embrace the fire in your nature? Because mm. it is part and parcel of your identity. And I've got a word for you guys that God gave me this morning as I was seeking him specifically. So if you are in Ezekiel, I want you to keep listening. I want you to receive this word because you aren't just a fire bringer, but you've been through fire. You've been through the travail. You've been crucified more times and your circumstances are pressing down so much on you. And you just look around you and you say to yourself and you say to the Lord, hang on, I've gone through, but I'm still hard and holding on to you. I'm in the siege like everybody else. Mm. I lost a loved one like everybody else. So how? what excuse do they have to stop serving you? What excuse do they have to be lukewarm? And I'm still on fire for you, Lord. And is there anybody else on fire? If you are that person, I want you to stick around. And I'm going to, I'm going to give you that word. But first, we're going to take a little, we're going to take a breather. I'm going to take me a sip of water here. <laughs> too much fire, too much fire. Woo-wee. He, he had me, guys. He, he had me there. I want to share with you guys something very special that Craig and I are doing the first and only time this year. The Lord told us that we needed to have a prophetic mentorship program this year, but he was very particular. I'm not doing a six week program this year. We have decided to commit two months, two full months to our prophetic mentorship program, whereby we are going to give you teaching, ministry activation sessions and materials, the whole nine yards, but to be available to you for two full months to help you not just embrace your prophetic identity, but also on how to express it so that we can accelerate your process. This is going to be a higher level course for those of you who've already gone through our prophetic school. Uh, I highly recommend that you are the first that are going to register. We're only having one of these this year. It starts on the 5th of August. We will not have another one until August next year. We would love to, but with all our bookings, uh, they're already booked up to August next year. 
we can only afford this amount of time. We've slotted these two months out. And even in between meetings, Craig and I will be flying out to Washington, but don't worry, we will still be there for you and with you to make sure that you get every bit of that training. Um, there's a lot I could say for it, but I want you to check it out for yourself. I want you to go to myprophetic.mentor.com. My prophetic mentor. I just, I was, I was oh. asking the Lord, I was like, okay, Lord, what should we name this URL? And I thought, you know, this is how I would like to be known by everybody that joins us for this program. My prophetic mentor. I want to be your prophetic mentor. Craig and I want to be your spiritual parents. We want to be your prophetic mentor. I don't just want to give you a bunch of teaching, but we're going to help you to embrace your call and walk it out. So we're going to have teaching live Zoom sessions every single Friday from the 5th of August. We're going to have Every second session is going to be breakout rooms where you're going to have ministry activation. I'm going to teach in those sessions. You're going to get five full teachings from me on the prophetic that nobody's heard before. Not even any of my students, the guys that come to PMP, you're going to get prophetic teaching that God has been showing me for the last 10 years and I have never published. So I'm going to be teaching on the profit in the marketplace. We're going to be teaching more on these types of the profit. And I want to be able to take the types and teach you how to express that type in the marketplace, in your church, in the family. Let's build. Let's raise the bar on the prophetic. I want to raise the bar on the prophetic. And I want to start with you. We want to create a safe environment for you to be accelerated. So if you already feel that fire of the Holy Spirit that says now's the time to cross the threshold to embrace your prophetic call. I'm ready for boot camp. Then good. God just landed a couple of spiritual apostolic parents at your door, an entire prophetic team. Go check it out. Mypropheticmentor.com. Before I go on to share the word that I have with you guys, I need to mention one more thing. We can only take 100 seats. Now, the reason for this is that we're not only doing live Zoom sessions with the room, but for three of those weeks in that two months, Craig and I will be taking one-on-one -on -one sessions with every single attendee so that we can pray over you, decree over you. And we worked it out between the three weeks and between him <laughs> taking some and me so we could schedule it properly. And we, we had to cap it at 100. Guys, we are literally investing all our time in these two months. You will be our complete investment. The early bird price is already up. Please go check out the website. First come, first serve. If you can't make it, wait until August next year. But if you're sitting here on this quest and you're ready today, then I know that the Holy Spirit's positioned you and you need to be part of a tribe. You need to be in a place where you can accelerate and grow and I just keep seeing this plateau from the minute we started. I kept seeing this plateau. So please put in. I want to be your prophetic mentor, my prophetic mentor. Come and read the page. Sign up. First come, first serve. Registrations close the minute we reach 100 seats. OK. All right. Thank you very much, team, for posting that you guys are amazing now. I want to move on a little here, Mike, and, and I'm going to give you an opportunity to share as well. And I want to give this word to all the Ezekiels that are out there. Amen. All of you listening, I want to give you an opportunity for those that came in a little bit later that weren't there to give me your emoji. For those of you who missed <laughs> it, we started <laughs> this event by asking everybody to share one emoji that depicted them. Prophets are not usually obedient so most of them put like three emojis five emojis except for facial he had the dynamite emoji he took instructions well but it's all right you're my peeps i love you i don't mind if you you bend the rules i get you you see i couldn't restrict myself to one emoji either so i totally get it but for all of you with the fire emoji all of you that that have been watching and paying attention and being like whoa 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 so that's why Yes, I've got a lot more to teach on, on the Ezekiel, but you're a prophet. You know when your heart witnesses, you feel the fire. And I want to give you this word from the Lord. And I want you to open your heart and receive it because it's not a word of fire. It's a word of healing and it's a word of oil. 
Just because you're the fire bringer doesn't mean that you need to carry on with the struggle deep inside of you. It doesn't mean that you need to carry on with this pain deep inside of you all the time. You are the one that brings the fire, but because you've been in the fire so much, you are charred and you are hurt. And there's some of you that have become very resentful. The Lord said to me, he said, my Ezekiel's have become very resentful. They become very frustrated. And yes, it is it is for the Ezekiel to bring the fire. It is for the Ezekiel to bring the sword. It is for the Ezekiel to call out the sin and call my people to come to order because the enemy has them. He has them in a snare. And the Ezekiel see it. And they see the church that has gone astray. And they see the church that is lukewarm. And they see the church that refuses to stand up and defend itself. And they become so frustrated and so caught up that they forgot that the greatest, greatest, task that Ezekiel did was after my people were sent into captivity. And I want to read you this passage before I continue. Ezekiel 35, 25 to 27. This, this he says to an adulterous people, a, not even lukewarm, outright i'm gonna worship other gods and turn my back on you i'm gonna backslide i'm not gonna care i'm I, i'm i'm totally gonna to go against every last christian moral code i'm gonna join the side of the enemy and god says then i will sprinkle clean water on you and you shall be clean i will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols now i will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a new heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. The Lord said, Ezekiel, the time of bringing the fire needs to change and you need to bring my people into reality of who I am. For I desire to take their hearts of stone and I want to make them the hearts of flesh. But it is for you to allow your own heart to begin beating again. For how can you soften the stony heart of my people when you have allowed the arrows of the enemy to make you so defensive, to put so much around your own heart? Because my child, even though my people have gone astray, even though they have forsaken me, even though they've turned on me, they've slapped me in the cheek and they have denied me like Judas did. They have stabbed me in the back like Judas did. They sold out. Even though they did all this to me, yet still do I call out to my bride. And I say to her, I will sprinkle you with my water and I will make you clean and I will soften my, your heart and I will woo you to myself. Ezekiel, I want to impart to you this anointing and this oil that you might bring the heart of my people back to me because I don't just want their obedience. I also want their heart. I also want their love for they are my bride. They are my bride and I died not just so that they would be obedient, but I also died that they might give me their hearts. And that Ezekiel is the secret of the fire that you walk in. You reveal my heart to my people. So I impart an anointing to you that you may sense the heart of God's people, that you may sense his heart for them. And you might make that connection just like the best man that brings the bride and the groom and make sure that they stay together. So indeed, do I impart that anointing to you, Ezekiel, that your heart may burn within you, that you may sense what's in the heart of my people underneath all the stone, underneath all my rebellion, yes. all of their rebellion, that they may feel my love. And then I give to you my heart, not just my anger, not just my frustration, but add my love, add my dying love to your fire. And every action you take, mm. Every act of love you perform, my child, will be infused with power, will be infused with fire. And it will not matter what you say. It will not matter how you say it, but the power in those words and the power within those actions mm. that will break down the stony hearts of my people and draw them to me, says the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Mm. Allow the Holy Spirit yes. to break down those walls in your heart. You have got so much love to give. Yes. Ezekiel, all our Ezekiel prophets out there, you're a dramatic bunch. Oh, my goodness. All the emoji, emojis, you're all a bunch of emoticons. Mm. 
You're loud. You're emotional. You're up and down. People get burnt with your fire. But can we look under all that and see how much you love? And it's because you love so much that you're so on fire. Because when you love Jesus and you love his people, you don't care who you can stand on. You don't care who's going to be upset with you. You're going to grab them. You're going to snatch them from the fire, whether they like you or not. And Ezekiel, that is the price God asks you to pay. They're not always going to like you, but they will be out of the enemy's camp. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Just there's someone out there listening. And God just says, my child, stop fighting my hand. <laughs> just sit. Sit now. Let all those weights go. Let them go now. Prophet, let them go. For indeed I have called you and I have placed you mm. in this church for my reason. You are my Ezekiel. You are my prophet. So as you sit and you listen to my instructions, know that I don't need you to do a big song and dance. I don't need you to get up onto the stage and be the forerunner. I need you to be the one to sit mm. and to listen. And to express what I want my church to hear. For indeed, I'm giving you the heartbeat mm. that you will show others. I'm giving you a love like no other. And prophet, it is time that you accept this love now. Mm. For indeed, you will run this race according to the plan that I have. But first, you have to sit. No more running. Mm. Just sit, says the Lord. Hoo-wee. Guys, I I'm so pumped. You know what? You know what, Mike? You know what I think we should do? What's that? Let's, let's podcast. Let's go podcast or something. Let's go I'm podcast. Ready. I'm ready. <laughs> you know, you sit in the presence of an Ezekiel. What yeah. I love about them is that they burn all the flesh away, they burn all the limitations away, and they say it's possible. Let's yes. do this. Yes. Yes. Mike's always saying, let's do this. Mike's word. And it's for every Ezekiel. Let's do this. Let's go. <laughs> we can do this. Let's go higher. Let's go deeper. Now, I don't know how. I don't know where. And I'm not thinking about all the people I'm going to upset, but let's go do this. Welcome, Ezekiel. Yeah. Are you a bringer that can't get Amen. his heart straight, but is ready to dive headlong into the problem alone, <laughs> into the holes of hell, if need be. If you're in Ezekiel, that's who you are. Ezekiel, if this really ministered to you, if that's the kind of prophet you are, you need to sign up for our prophetic mentorship program so I can teach you how to take that fire and express it in a way yes. that doesn't get you so much backlash. We actually want people to receive your fire and now Amen. that you're ready to accept your identity, let me teach you how to walk that identity out in a new level of maturity, okay? We're going to be right back here on Friday. Mike, do you remember what the next type is? You see, I should know this. Oh, my team wrote me a beautiful list. <clears throat> what is it our should, next type on it Friday? Should, it should be the Nehemiah and Gideon. <clears throat> oh, Nehemiah and Gideon. Are yeah. you a Nehemiah? Yeah. Are you a Gideon? Oh, should I give them a sneak peek? Yes, I think I'm going to give you a cheat. Oh. Go to myprophetictribe.com and find it there. Ha, 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 ha. I just did that. All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining us. I don't want to say goodbye just yet. So I'm going to allow a couple of comments. And if anybody's got a question, I'm going to give you exactly three minutes to, to throw it down. Whether you're on Facebook, YouTube, you're here with us on Zoom, please go ahead, throw your question in. I've got five minutes to answer your question for you today while I take a sip of water. I see we had a whole bunch of comments here while we were busy recording. Joanny says, love you, Apostle Khalid. I love you too, Joanny. I'm so glad that you could join us here today. Um, oh, Tara B, she's going through. <laughs> she said that uh, 
to something she's nuts doing all these prophetic things you know what it reminds me of the title of that book i'm not crazy i'm a prophet we give it away for free on our um torchministries.com website and um when we were seeking the lord on what book to give for free i was like there's only one i know that just the title alone ministers to every prophet i know and it's i'm not crazy I'm a prophet. So I hope you got that book, Tara. If not, get hold of one of our team. We've got some live chat going now on our website. Connect with them. See how you can get that free download. Okay. Thank you so much, Mark, for jumping in and sharing. Um, Bethany Seely asks a very good question. She said, is it possible to be a blend of prophetic types? Absolutely. Because it also depends on positioning. Depends on what God needs you for that time. Why? Why? Why Ezekiel? Why? Well, because Israel was about to go through a massive shift. They're about to go into captivity, right? So it was at that time Ezekiel was needed. <clears throat> and so God put Ezekiel in place. He positioned him for that time. And to be able to release that word and to navigate the children of Israel through captivity, he needed well to go through a process and be what they needed for that time. Okay? So it 100%, 100% depends on your positioning. And it is entirely possible as well, in case somebody else asks me to go from one type to another. Remember, guys, my students, you better be understanding and remembering this point because I've drilled it into you. It's not about you. It's about God's people. Our mandates, our types, what we have to give is not about our needs. God shapes us for his people. Now, I, I love that. I love that. I'm shaped as a vessel because God saw a need in his people and he looked for someone willing to be shaped and he found me and he said, I'm going to honor you by making you the answer to the cries and prayers of my people. That's why we can never put him in a box and we can never say, oh, I'm just this one type for the rest of my life. No, I hope that as we were sharing today, if you are an Ezekiel, that you recognize why you're being positioned where you are. Now, there are some of you that have been Ezekiel's for a very long time, and God now has suddenly shifted your position and your fire doesn't work anymore. That's very confusing. And that's why I need you guys to come to the rest of the quest, come and understand all of the types. Um, if you can't make it, I'm gonna go way deeper in the types in our prophetic mentorship programs so to get in there. And then you can answer, ask your questions to um, Apostle Craig and I directly, and we can navigate you and help you identify your position today where you've been where you are and where god's leading you next so you armed for every season fantastic question thank you so much bethany uh cheryl smith oh i missed that one uh how do you know what gifts of the spirit you have and how to pray with authority oh my goodness cheryl you must be picking this up in the spirit because you need to come and watch the quest for the new Nehemiah type. That is so a Nehemiah question. Someone on the team, please, can you copy that question? Because you're going to need to answer that question for Cheryl in the very next quest on the Nehemiah type. You see, you know, that I love doing these meetings with prophets. They always pick it up and they run with it. They spearhead it. I love the prophets. So I need to write a book on why I love prophets so much and give it to pastors everywhere. Okay, <laughs> bit of dark humor there. Um, good afternoon, Jennifer Smith. It's good to see you here. Thank you for joining. Alfred asks, is there a Jeremiah, Elijah, and John the Baptist type? Again, you're going to have to come to the quest, but I could give you this one cheat. How about you go to myprophetictribe.com? We've got the entire curriculum there. So you don't have to miss a single one of these quests. Or you can just jump on our community. We have a personal community. It's a lot like our own special Facebook community where you can interact with every single one of us and everybody that's connected. We're nearly 700 members strong. And you can find that at apostolic network dot com if you go there sign up for our community so you get notices of all these events and you don't ever miss out but yeah for the cheat sheet alfred my prophetic tribe.com is going to have all the quests and all the types that we're going to be discussing in the next two months um tiffany says can you be different types in the different roles you have or can you only be one type at a time for example, I work two jobs and I'm a prophetic school student. They each seem different, but I could be overthinking. Actually, not at all. 
If God has already shaped your character, I do believe you could be two separate types, but if you don't identify it, you're going to mess it up. You need, you need to embrace your prophetic self. That's why we call the quest what it, what it is. You need to embrace that prophetic self there. Look, I'm a mom. I'm a wife. I'm a, I'm a trainer. I'm an apostle. I'm a spiritual parent. I'm a mentor and I'm a coach. Each one of these expects a different kind of character out of me. But if I don't know that I am in wife mode when I'm being a coach or coach mode when I'm being a wife, yeah, bad things happen in my life. When I take the coach into wife mode, I got to, I got to, I got to disembrace some of that self. Yeah. So when you don't recognize your prophetic self and you interject the wrong prophetic self in the wrong lane. <clears throat> yeah. Well, that's why we're here. We're here to sort it all out and help you embrace the person God spent a very long time shaping. So please do come to the rest of the quest, Tiffany, and identify, oh, here I'm meant to be fire. Here I'm meant to be water. Fantastic question, you guys. There's nothing you can't ask us. <laughs> Apostle Craig says to me, this is my husband chiming in on my own chat. He says, uh, I need to write a book, says why I love my crazy prophets. Okay. Okay. That's really cool. Why I love my crazy prophets. He's right. I think that's a really good book title. I'm there. <laughs> Can prophets hold more than one office? Gloria, excellent question. And um, it's not really, I can't really answer it here because we're just focusing specifically on the prophetic types. But yes, go get fivefold offices for today. All right. Um, <laughs> don't see how do you identify which type? Well, you want to look at the signs and look at where God's positioned you as well. You'll recognize when we taught, and that was a question from Rejoice. That is a beautiful name. Rejoice Plaka. She asked, or he asked, because it's rejoice. That could be a pretty gender neutral name. How do you identify which type? That's why we're having this. I want you to make sure that you're at all nine so that you can compare them and see which one you fit into most. But you want to look firstly at the characteristics of that type and also the positioning. Guys, I am making this point on purpose. The positioning of the type is very, very important as well. And um, a same question. Can you be more than one type? I'm glad that I answered that. Bethany was the first one to get in there. Uh, Tara B says, why is it so hard to reach our adult children? I think that's uh, one of the most frustrating things that you see that is not really in line with the, the quiz, but uh, the quiz, but I'm glad that you asked Tara, if you're on our community of apostles and prophets, why don't you go in there and ask that question? We really have incredible teachers, incredible pastors there that would be more than happy to answer your question for you. We're here for you. <clears throat> guys, in case you didn't get it, we're here to accelerate your process. We're the real deal. And I'm not just saying that. I'm saying it because we've lived it. For those who've been along the way with us for so many years now, this is us. Your call is important to us. And I'm going to sign off now with one last um, question here. It says, is the prophetic mentorship program only for prophets? Kristen, that is a brilliant question. That is a really, really brilliant question. No, the prophetic mentorship program is not only for prophets because what we're going to do there is really help you define your call. Now, the teaching I'm going to do, I'm going to warn you, the teaching I'm going to do is going to be on the prophetic, the, you know, using your prophetic call in the marketplace, what your prophetic type is, how to express yourself as a prophet in the workplace, in your relationships at church. But as you learn that, I, I hope some pastors join the program so that they can learn how the prophets think. And I can help you if there are any pastors that want to join the program or teachers that want to join the program. Please, <clears throat> when you fill out the form, when you come and get connected, let us know. And I will personally work with you. If you have any prophets in your congregation and you're like, Lord Jesus, help me. I don't know what to do with them. Good news. I do know what to do with them. And I know what they need. And I know why they're crazy. I know they're kind of crazy. And I know how to work with that crazy. And I'll be more than happy to help you with that crazy. Because I know that for pastors, sometimes um, our aggressive nature, especially the Ezekiels, can burn pastors pretty badly. I've had to heal a lot of pastors from some Ezekiels that didn't know how to use their fire properly. So you can consider me the middleman, the bridge between the two. <clears throat> for the teachers, absolutely. Come and study. Let me know that that's what you want. 
And that's what's cool about this program is because it's so hands-on. If I know you're a teacher, if I know you're a pastor, I know how to approach you and be like, okay, if you're a teacher, you want to write down this principle, you want to check for these patterns, don't forget to include this um, doctrinal um, concept here and here. But for the, the prophets, they're going to feel the fire, they're going to come for the power, they're going to come for the anointing and everything else that goes along with it. Thank you for asking that question, um, Tiffany. Really, really appreciate that. Love you guys. Uh, and this, this time I'm really going to end. Yes, I am. But if you are watching on Facebook and you're only getting the tail end, don't worry. We're posting the video. It's going to be there. And you know what? You can join the next team that is going to be with us on Friday. Same place, same time, same Facebook page, same YouTube account. Same community of apostles and prophets. We are here to accelerate your call. We're here for you, with you, by you, when you want us to. Sometimes even when you don't want us there, we're still there. Because we're like Ezekiel's too. We want to snatch you from the fire and be there. Love you guys.